Hi, I'm Jessica Cartalia, and welcome to Your Money Matters here on CBS News Philadelphia, a weekly roundup of the top financial and consumer stories that impact you and your community. Let's get started. A growing TikTok trend might be helping Gen Z become more financially responsible. It's called loud budgeting, and the original video has been viewed more than a million times on the social media platform. Karen Kafa explains what loud budgeting is and also how effective it can be. Out quiet luxury. In loud budgeting. It started as a joke, but turns out loud budgeting could be solid financial advice. It's really about starting somewhere. And it's, it's really a journey, financial literacy. The viral TikTok trend is all about talking openly with friends and family about how much money you are willing to spend when and where. It's a hard economy, and I think we all need to, like, be for real, you know, um, and just kind of stop living lives we can afford. So I came to Blaze to pick up pizza for myself and my husband because... 2024, I'm not paying for delivery services. Financial advisors say the accountability is a good step, but budgeters also need to set specific goals and follow through. It's hard to be loud about something you don't have, right? The trend is part of a larger generational shift in spending habits as Gen Z and millennials, burdened with record student loan debt and economic instability, have learned to tighten their wallets. One of the key things driving it is this more honest approach to spending money and being more open. It also departs from long held social taboos around discussing money, but etiquette experts say loud budgeting is mostly positive as long as you don't overshare. You walk a fine line when you start making other people feel uncomfortable or or um, they don't want to ask you to go anyplace because they know it's going to be a hard no. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Philadelphia public school officials say that they are about to face a major budget shortfall unless something drastic happens. CBS Philadelphia's Eva Anderson has more from the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts where it all took place. Community leaders say the state of your students' education is at stake. It's going to take an aggressive budget to get Philadelphia public schools where they need to be. It's a vision shared by the relatively new superintendent and the even newer mayor of Philadelphia. When addressing public school funding Tuesday, Mayor Sherelle Parker didn't mince words. They're giving crumbles, crumbles, crumbles of funding when they really do deserve a whole loaf. Joining Mayor Parker in that sentiment, was Superintendent Dr. Tony Watlington, who painted a bleak picture of next school year's budget. We will be looking at a $400 million deficit if we don't get the funding that our kids so desperately deserve. They say that's because a big chunk of money in federal pandemic related assistance is now leaving their budget, more than $1 billion they'd come to depend on. We know that absent additional funding, uh, $1.2 billion will leave our budget in September of this year. Parents we spoke with say, at the very least, they're pleased with the superintendent's transparency. I do appreciate that he showed that we will be experiencing a deficit because it makes us aware so that if we do see some things where there may be a lack in, we can kind of make that connection ourselves. The superintendent has proposed a budget to cover an extra $7,000 per student and hopes to get the state and feds on board. So at Tuesday's meeting, Speakers called on everyone to talk to their legislators. We have to together right now, federal, state, local government, private sector, philanthropic community, make the funding of public education during this uh, budget cycle, it has to become our number one priority. Eva Anderson, CBS News, Philadelphia. With the nation's 250th anniversary just a few years off, the historic district is scheduled to get quite an upgrade. Congressman Brendan Boyle presented a $500,000 community project funding check to the Center City District. Now, the new lights will add sidewalk lighting along South 6th Street between Chestnut and Walnut Streets, just adjacent to Independence Hall. The Center City District project will serve to enhance pedestrian safety and mobility within the historic district. It's remarkable when, it, when you talk about in terms of attracting uh, tourists, attracting, uh, attracting guests, just having better lighting can make such a difference. The lighting project is expected to enhance the nation's 250th anniversary celebrations in the cradle of liberty in 2026. 
Governor Shapiro visited Bethlehem to announce that his administration has created a 10-year economic development strategy for Pennsylvania. He's asking the state legislature for tens of millions of dollars to invest in five sectors, agriculture, energy, life sciences, manufacturing, and robotics and technology. It's important to note that we are still not in the top 10 states for doing business. And when it comes to job creation, well, let's be frank, Pennsylvania is even further behind. I am sick and tired of losing to Ohio, New York, New Jersey, or anyone else. We've got to win again here in Pennsylvania, and to do that, we are going to invest. We're going to. The governor will provide more financial details in his budget address next week. Well, Governor Josh Shapiro announced that Pennsylvania's upcoming budget will include a significant investment in transit systems. The proposal includes almost $283 million of investment in transit systems and nearly $1.5 billion in new state funding over five years. The governor's plan would deliver the funding needed to avoid immediate service cuts or fare increases on SEPTA. It would also create a more balanced and stable funding structure for SEPTA in the future. Get ready to pay more to drive on some New Jersey roads. The Turnpike Authority Board approved a 3% toll hike on the Turnpike and Garden State Parkway. That means the average toll for cars on the Turnpike will increase by 15 cents. On the Garden State Parkway, the average toll will jump by about 5 cents. The new rates go into effect on the 1st of March. No wallet, no problem. Driver's licenses in New Jersey could soon go high tech. A committee in the state Senate advanced a bill that would create digital driver's licenses that you could put on your cell phone. Several other states, including Delaware, already offer the mobile licenses. We'll let you know if the bill makes it to the governor's desk. The first Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets are back in service weeks after the FAA grounded the aircraft for inspection. The planes were grounded nationwide after a door plug blew out of an Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 minutes after takeoff earlier this month. A warning for Toyota drivers, that warning affecting more than 50,000 older cars. The automaker is urging those drivers to park their vehicles immediately until they get their airbags fixed. Voluntary recall affects the 2003 and 2004 model Corolla and Matrix and the 2004 and 2005 RAV4. Toyota says the age of the airbags could make it more likely for a part inside to explode, which may lead to serious injury or death. The FCC wants to make robocalls generated by artificial intelligence illegal. The FCC says there's been an increase in AI robocalls over the last few years. Not too long ago, a robocall with an AI voice resembling President Biden targeted thousands of New Hampshire voters. The FCC says AI technology has the potential to confuse consumers with misinformation by imitating voices of celebrities, political candidates, and family members. Interest rates are at a 20-year high, which has made it more difficult to buy a home or a car. At the same time, inflation remains higher than normal. The Federal Reserve took both of those things into account during its latest meeting on interest rates. Bradley Blackburn tells us what happened. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell and the board decided to once again leave interest rates alone, with inflation falling significantly over the past year and a half to 3.4 percent. The group didn't see the need for a rate hike. But the Fed also isn't ready to lower rates either because it wants inflation down to 2%. The question now, when will rates come down? The Fed meets again in March. I don't think it's likely that the committee will reach a level of confidence by the time of the March meeting to identify March as the time to do that. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger. More people believe that it is the May meeting, the subsequent meeting, where we will see a rate cut. The Fed started raising rates in 2022, and many analysts feared it could crater the economy, but that hasn't happened. The job market has remained strong, and consumers continue to spend at a healthy pace, but higher rates are hurting the real estate market. Home sales are down, with mortgage rates way up from 2022 levels. Interest on credit cards is at a record high, now nearing 21 percent. And average rates for a used car loan are up more than three percentage points from two years ago. If borrowers are the ones who are feeling the brunt of high interest rates, savers continue to be very pleased. So we see high yield savings accounts and online accounts generating four or five percent interest. It's really remarkable. And for now, interest rates will remain high until the Fed decides to bring them down. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York.
So what will Congress do to regulate big tech? That is the question that many are asking after lawmakers grill the CEOs of five social media companies on Capitol Hill. The bipartisan group took companies to task over failures to protect teens and children who use their platforms. CBS News correspondent Jared Hill has more now from New York. Do you have blood on your hands? Tough questions on Capitol Hill for the CEOs of Meta, Snap, TikTok, X, and Discord. The heads of the five social media giants also came face to face with parents who say their children were harmed. Some of them died as a result of online exploitation, harassment, and bullying on their sites. Would you like to apologize for what you've done to these good people? Families have Snapchat's CEO also apologizing during questions related to children who died after allegedly buying drugs through the app. I'm so sorry that we have not been able to prevent these tragedies. Shauna Pouch says her 11 year old granddaughter fell into a mental health crisis after she was sexually exploited on Snapchat. They need to be held accountable for this. They need to do more instead of doing less. The CEOs of SNAP and X did express support for one of several bills lawmakers have proposed, others vowing to continue working toward a solution, as members of the committee acknowledged Congress also hasn't done enough. It's been 28 years, what, since the internet? We haven't passed any of these bills. Committee members also say they want to reform a 1996 law that shields tech companies from being sued by users. Jared Hill. CBS News. A $78 billion tax cut package is headed to the Senate after passing in the House last night with rare bipartisan support. The measure would boost the child tax credit and reinstate some business tax deductions. Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with more. The yeas are 357, the nays are 70. It's an issue that brought together Republicans and Democrats as the U.S. House overwhelmingly passed a $78 billion tax cut package that aims to help U.S. families, children, and businesses. You know, I've been told that a half a loaf is better than none, but this isn't even a half a loaf. But I'm going to vote for it because our families and businesses need help. While not as generous as what was passed during the pandemic, the bill boosts the refundable part of the child tax credit from $1,600 to up to $2,000 by 2025. It would also reinstate some business deductions, including those connected to research and development. Each of these policies will help American businesses grow, create jobs, and sharpen their competitive advantage against China. This is obviously a very um, rare but nice bipartisan effort to see. John Buell of the Nonpartisan Tax Policy Center estimates all eligible households would see an average tax cut of around $680 if the Senate passes it by the April tax deadline. As you know, people very often live paycheck to paycheck. So for people who are lower income, who have uh, multiple kids, those are the people who are probably going to see the biggest benefits from this. He says taxpayers who file early could still amend their filing if the bill gets to the president's desk. Some Senate Republicans have expressed reservations. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. Well, this year, colleges are getting financial aid data from students later than usual. That's because the Department of Education revamped the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA, late last year. It had to be updated again earlier this month to include inflation data. That freed up an additional $1.8 billion in financial aid, but it also delayed processing. Colleges may not get the data until the first half of March which is when students are used to hearing decisions on their aid. Temple University has announced a new program for free tuition for some students. The Temple Promise program will cover the cost for students whose family's adjusted gross income is less than $65,000. It applies for all four years. This program is being implemented for students who will attend next fall. So many people literally don't go on to college because of lack of finances. This removes that as a barrier. That's a game changer. Temple says the new program aligns with the visions of leaders at the city and state levels. 
After 25 years, Temple is phasing out diamond dollars. The university created the campus-based debit card system in 1999 to eliminate the need for students to carry cash. At the time, many of them didn't have credit cards. Well, now students can use their smartphones to make payments. Temple says any students with money remaining in their diamond dollar accounts when the program ends on May 15th will be reimbursed. Well, it turns out a number of couples are being unfaithful when it comes to their finances. As CBS News correspondent Christine Lazar tells us, experts say couples need to be open about money and have a financial plan. How long have you guys been together? Uh, 11 years. 12 years. 12 years. <laughs> Oops. Married couple Ted Toussaint and Hillary Reynolds may not be on the same page about everything, but they are when it comes to money. Are you always honest about your finances with your spouse? Yes. Yes, I am actually. We both are. We've had to be really yeah. transparent. A new survey reveals that's not the case for many couples. We found that 42 percent of people who are currently married or living with a romantic partner have kept a financial secret from that person. Ted Rossman from Bankrate says 30% admit spending more than their spouse or partner would approve of. 19% said they have a secret savings account. And 18% acknowledged having a secret credit card. Gen Zers are most likely to commit financial infidelity, followed by more than half of millennials. The numbers are lower for Gen Xers and baby boomers. I think also the fact that people are getting married later is leading people to get more entrenched in their habits, and especially in two-income couples. Rossman says honesty is the best policy. I think you do need to manage money collectively, but you could each carve out a little bit of money from every paycheck that's yours and yours alone, as long as you've agreed on those parameters. Rossman also recommends couples sit down regularly and go over the finances to make sure there are no surprises. Christine Lazar, CBS News, Los Angeles. UPS is cutting 12,000 jobs as part of a bid to save a billion dollars in costs. Managers and contractors will make up most of the layoffs. The cuts come as UPS issued a disappointing sales outlook for this year. UPS lost business last year as customers concerned about a possible strike by the Teamsters shifted shipments to rival carriers. UPS said it expects to get most of that business back. Walmart is showing its confidence in brick and mortar, announcing it is adding 150 stores in the U.S. over the next five years. Most of them will be new, but some will be expansions of smaller locations into super centers. Walmart currently has more than 4,600 stores across the U.S. and is the largest private employer in the country, with about 1.6 million workers. So we've been talking about these Stanley tumblers. They've been wildly popular, and they've become the it thing. Well, the cup craze appears to have reached a new fan base, toddlers. Yes, <laughs> I said toddlers. You may have seen a couple of people out there clearing entire stocks of Stanleys in a matter of minutes. Now stores say they're having a hard time keeping a look-alike toy version in stock. <laughs> Fisher Price's Wake Up and Learn coffee mug is currently sold out at Walmart and Amazon. The cup normally sells for around 10 bucks. Well, they are all the rage, and they come in a number of colors to hold your drink. There's no question that Stanley and other brands of travel tumblers are the it thing to have right now. But they are also grabbing attention for another reason. There are fears that those popular cups may contain lead. Correspondent Mandy Gaither got a doctor to weigh in on the concerns of the public. Consumers have waited in long lines to snag one. One woman is even accused of stealing $2,500 worth of them. While the Stanley Cup craze continues, some are worried their favorite tumblers may contain lead. I think anytime you hear that you'll be exposed to lead, you should be concerned. A spokesperson for Stanley acknowledges that the material used to seal the vacuum insulation at the base of the cups does contain some lead, but says once sealed, this area is covered with a durable stainless steel layer, making it inaccessible to consumers, adding, rest assured that no lead is present on the surface of any Stanley product that comes into contact with the consumer, nor the con contents of the product. While lead exposure is dangerous, especially to young children and those who are pregnant, Dr. Denise Milstein with Mayo Clinic says she doesn't think it's necessary to ditch your cups. 
So if you are using these cups correctly and they are not broken in terms of their sealant, I don't think you need to be terribly concerned. Milstein says many people use the cups to help encourage more water consumption, a healthy alternative to beverages like soda. So I do want to encourage people to put this in context for their overall health, not just to be fearful of the potential lead exposure alone. I'm Mandy Gaither. So here's a question for you. Are you team Dunkin' or team Starbucks? Um, I'm team I make my tea at home every morning. So, yeah, they don't see my money very often. But according to a new report, it says your preference may depend on your geography. A real estate data company found that the top five cities for Starbucks lovers are on the West Coast, including Seattle's which is home, the hometown of Starbucks. That makes sense. And four out of the top five Dunkin' cities are on the East Coast, including Dunkin's hometown of Boston. You make Starbucks trips every day. But I'm split. If it's regular coffee, like cream and sugar, I'll do Dunkin'. My latte I want from Starbucks. Well, there are now commercials on Amazon Prime. Amazon says the ads which started this week will help it continue to stream popular programs. Customers can pay $2.99 a month more to avoid them. A recent Morgan Stanley report predicts prime video ads will generate more than $3 billion in additional revenue this year. Universal Music Group says it's pulling songs by its artists from TikTok. In an open letter, it says the social media platform isn't willing to pay artists and songwriters what it considers a just rate. It also cites concerns about artificial intelligence and online safety for users. In response, TikTok accuses the company of greedily acting against the best interests of its artists. This year's Super Bowl game between the Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers is the most expensive Super Bowl on record for fans. According to TickPick, the average price to attend the game is just under $10,000. Are you kidding me? That's 70% more expensive than last year. If you want to catch a deal, keep in mind there is a chance prices might decline as the game gets closer with resellers looking to dump their seats for lower prices. And prices for real estate have been through the roof, but seven lucky lottery winners in Newark got a chance now to buy a house for just a dollar. You guessed it. There's a catch, though. It had to be, right? The, the homes are in need of major repair or they're a complete teardown. The program is a way to add more local homeowners to the city. The winners pre-qualified last year, but will need to borrow hundreds of thousands just to fix up those properties. The properties were all seized by the city for non-payment of taxes, bills, or other public debts. Well, free burgers for a year. How's that sound? Depends on where they're from, mm. is what I have to say. McDonald's, though, is giving its fans a chance to win just that. All you have to do is be on the lookout at your local fast food chain for the Ham Burglar's new getaway car. It is a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda, or in this case, a Burger Cuda trimmed in the mascot's iconic black and white stripes. Customers can scan the code on the car to enter the sweepstakes or head over to the website spothamburglar.com for a chance to win. Thanks so much for watching this week's Your Money Matters on CBS News Philadelphia. If you're enjoying this show, download our app, CBS News Philadelphia, on your smart TV, Roku, Apple TV, or streaming device to catch us every weekend.